It's like fan fiction. Man, come on, let's live in the real world, guys. Oh, this rat. There is a rat and she scurries and she is, she's really misbehaving lately, this rat. Her name is the Tam, the Tam rat. Man, she is on fire, girl. Uh, she's wilder than ever. Now, the rat that scurries um, has, uh, the rat that scurries has uh, spoken on her uh, podcast and said, that she heard that Danielle Cabral allegedly beat up her brother's wife, and this is why the brother no longer speaks to her. Melissa Gorga has reacted and said, wow, what? I never heard this. Tamra said, well, look at me. Let me puff my chest because I am a... There goes the tail, a rat, a rat that scurries. Well, let me tell you something about the rat. I've had the similar situation with the rat right here behind the velvet rope because a Tamara is now saying, she's saying on the podcast, well, I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. Now there's all sorts of headlines all over that say that Tamara said that Danielle Cabral's brother doesn't speak to her because she tried to beat up the wife. Tamara has now entered the conversation and said, that's not what I said. I have PTSD because this is exactly what she did to me when she was on Behind the Velvet Rope. Well, here is a, some quotes that were pulled for me. Thank you, research department. I ain't sitting there and listening to Tamara's uh, podcast. But the headlines are, uh, Tamara Judge claims Danielle Cabral and her brother are estranged because she beat up his wife. Tamara Judge says, that's not what I said. Let me tell you something. These are the quotes that says, um, let me just, uh, t you know, as, as Tamara interjected and said, I had somebody reach out to me and say, I know why Danielle doesn't talk to her brother, said Tamara. And I didn't respond to this person at all. And she went on to tell me that Danielle beat up her brother's wife, allegedly. Yeah, we heard that, said Teddy. So... Tamara then clarified she doesn't know if the allegation is true. But now she said, let me repeat. I had somebody reach out to me and say, I know why Danielle doesn't talk to her brother. And I didn't respond to this person. She went out to tell me Danielle beat up her brother's wife. So the headline Tamara Judge claims, uh, and now Tamara's saying that's not what I said. Tamara is now dealing with a technicality where she's going to say, I didn't say that. But I said that I heard it. I don't really see what the difference is. It's not that strange, a strong headline. Just for one second, we covered this in our live show. When Tamara Judge was on the Behind the Velvet Row podcast, she said, when I asked her about Heather Dubrow, what, what do you think of Heather Dubrow? Period. That was the sentence. There was no leading question. There was no, now if you ask me, David Yontif, what I think about Heather Dubrow, I would say, I think she's fucking rich as fuck. And I think I don't care how you feel, and I'm not getting political. I feel she's a great fucking mother from where I'm sitting and watching on the damn TV because I don't have kids. I don't want kids. I never want kids. But I can tell you, I said from day one, if Jen Shaw were my good friend and she did all that, I would be standing by Jen Shaw. I'd be visiting her in jail and saying, I am here for you. And I would stand by her because I stand by my family and my friends. So I don't care what your beliefs are, the fact that Heather stands by all her children and is very supportive of all her children, that to me is the job of a parent, okay? I'm not getting political. I really don't give a shit. But I would say Heather's filthy fucking rich and she's a great parent. If you ask me what I think of Heather Dubrow, I asked Tamara and she said, the biggest mistake Bravo ever made was letting her go. Then there were worldwide headlines behind the Velvet Rope podcast in the lights. And it said, Tamara Judge confirms Heather Dubrow was fired from the Real Housewives of Orange County. Oh, I have all the texts from the rat. I have all the emails from the rat. And she wanted to know where she said that in the transcript. Now, I don't owe you anything because you're not my mother and I'm not fucking you. But we went over it. I showed it to the rats. And she's like, well, that's not what I said. And she was arguing that basically when she said the biggest mistake Bravo ever made in letting Heather Dubrow grow, she didn't mean she, that they fired her. She meant that they were trying to negotiate and work it out. And the biggest mistake they made was saying, Heather, we can't meet your number. 
oh, this Tamara, she's good. So just like on my podcast, when she found a loophole to what she said, when you say the biggest mistake Bravo ever made was letting Heather Dubrow go and all the headlines, which I'm not responsible for, say Tamara says that Heather was fired. It's not that much of a stretch. It's basically exactly what you said, Tamara. I'm a lawyer, so I get your nuance that that's not what you said, that you said the biggest mistake was Bravo letting her go. But for 99% of the people in the world to read it like Bravo let her go, like we let you go, we fired you, it's not such a stretch. Saying that you heard about it and someone slipped into your DMs, it's not much different than you saying that basically you heard, which is what you did. And then all the headlines. So she's trying to get out of this. I don't know. And now I'm on a fucking tangent and down a rabbit hole, but because it brought back PTSD. But give me a break, Tamara. Uh, the fact that these are the headlines this is exactly what you said. And uh, do we believe it? I don't know. That's not the point. So she just brought back PTSD. Uh, Joe and Melissa, they have that live comedy show. You know, part of it, which came out, Joe was saying he passed away and Teresa was there to do a eulogy. And then Joe was pretending to be Teresa. And I know all the messy G fans, again, I don't know what you call yourself. Tell me, tell me what you call yourselves. Uh, but Josefina Gogacita then got on like a, a chair and I guess pretended to be taller. And when he was doing the eulogy delivered by his sister, Teresa, he said, that bitch killed my brother. So I guess Teresa saying that bitch, meaning Melissa. And um, I should have known when she brought sprinkle cookies instead of pinoli cookies. Now, I mean, I don't care if you're on the side of Gorga. I don't care if you're on the side of Teresa. This shit just ain't funny. Anyone go to this comedy show? Like, is this, I mean, am I in the Twilight Zone? Is this funny? Look, I am a stand-up comedian. I get a lot of credit to anyone that gets up there. I don't think it's easy. Somehow you guys listen to me here. Thank you. I'm humbled. I don't know why you're still listening. I mean, I do. It's good. But like, man, aren't you sick of me? But anyway, this doesn't sound like it's funny to me. Is that funny? I don't know. And yes, all the huggas, the huggas are in the front. You guys are in the front after yesterday's episode when I talked to you about what I see the future of New Jersey. It's all the tree huggers are in the front. But uh, and I'm glad you guys are sitting in the front for once. Um, when Melissa's old nose comes back, you guys can sit in the back. But today, the tree huggers are in the front. Uh, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Joe and Melissa have no stand-up unless it's about Teresa. They're obsessed, okay? Then they start talking about Louis' pajamas and that whole thing. And then Catania and Benigno and Fuda, they all come out where and they say, Joe, we didn't want to see you alone. So we all have Nano's pajamas on. I mean, again, I don't find this funny. I don't find the ass shots. I don't find this, this humor funny. Does anyone else find Joe Gorga funny? I don't know. No offense. I wish you the best of luck with your act. I just don't find it funny. I'm going to pass on that one. Uh, Frank apparently at the show was shooting off his mouth again. And he said, uh, you know, it's really...